All right, and we've got McDowell and Johnson as the return men. Both standing just inside the five. Here's Bullock's kickoff. It's a pretty good one. It's going to go end zone about two yards deep. They will bring it out to the five, to the tens, cutting back to this side of the field. Tripped up and hit at the 20, and down he goes. He'll come out with a, a single setback, and that's Alexander Robinson. He's 5'10". He is a sophomore. And there's the snap, and it will be play action. Going to throw to this side of the field, open at the 25, at the 30, and down at the 30-yard line. Ball caught that time by uh, Carter Mikowski. Come out and show an eye. And by the way, neither of their fullbacks have any carries this year. Tailback got it. They try the middle. They're out across the 35 to the 39-yard line. The 40, and that's Robinson. Robinson gets the carry. That time out of an eye formation. Single setback. And a tight end flared out here to the right side. Play action again. Arnod, the tight end, will make the catch at the 43-yard line. That's a first down, a pickup of about four. First down and 10 for ISU at their own 44-yard line. Nearing midfield on their first possession. Play action. Arnod sets up, throws, has a man, and that's a catch across midfield to the Aggie 40-yard line. Caught by R.J. Sumrall. Devin Gregg made that stop. Dixon, Gregg, Brown, Hunter, Pugh, and Frederick in the secondary as we use five back there. And a handoff from the 40 to the 37-yard line. Robinson again, who has 73 carries into the uh, game tonight with 317 yards for the year. The Aggie 36-and-a-half-yard line, second down, and about seven. In the shotgun, Arnott, high snap, got it, breaks the tackle, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10. He's inside the 10, and down he goes at the four-yard line. First and goal on a nice run that time by Arnott, and he just went 33 yards, come out again in that eye formation with a tight end to the left side, a flanker to the left side, and a split in right. They gave it to the tailback. They try the left and maybe the four-yard line. Robinson again, the sophomore, will net the four, so no gain. It'll be second and goal at the four. Paul Bazaar made the initial hit, and then they jumped in and helped him bring Robinson down. Tight end goes in motion from the right to the left, and there's the handoff, and they try the left side. That'll be Robinson again, maybe the two-yard line. Third and goal at the Aggie 2 ISU. Tight end steps back. Split in, went up on the line on the left side. There's the handoff. They're diving. Did he get in? Yes. And they're signaling touchdown for Robinson. That will be his third of the season. And that will be only the 11th time that they have a rushing touchdown this season. So the Cyclones have the lead now before the extra point. And on the extra point, it will be Grant Mahoney. It's up, and it is good. He is now 21 of 21 for the season. That just made it 7 0. First period, 10. And we're ready for the ISU kickoff. And it'll be Stevens and Gray. One at the 10, the other back at the three yard line. And it's a short kick. Going to take it at the 20, and that's Stevens to the 25. They're on him. And he will go no further than the 25 yard line, maybe the 26. Got caught up in a bunch of traffic there, Dave, in the middle of the field. And we'll go with Lane at a fullback, flexed out left side, and Gray will be the tailback. We had motion from the right side. Gerard wants to air it out on a first down, and here's a throw out across the middle. That's an incomplete pass to Terrence McCoy about the 30-yard line. All right, from the Aggie, 26 in the shotgun, and it's an end around, and it's coming back to this side, and they're tripped up and a flag down. And that goes down at about the 23-yard line. It's going to go against the Aggies. He's going to be holding, I think, on Jeff he, Fuller. E.J. Shankle on the end around going from the right side back to the left. And they were not fooled by this. And the penalty will take it back another 10 yards on the holding call. They're going to end up about the 15-yard line, I think. Let's see if they take the penalty. There we go. Our referee is Greg Burks. Back, number eight of the offense. Penalties decline. Third down. They've got to get it out to the AM 36, does the AM offense. Going to go empty in the backfield with Gerard Johnson. And Iowa State with a three man front. There's the snap. He's back. He throws. He's got a man. That will be a first down. That was going to be Jeff Fuller. Fuller across the 35 out to the 39 yard line. Lane the fullback, Gray the tailback in an eye. And they will give it to Gray. He's across the 40, he's out to the 45 yard line. Just picked up six on Cyrus. 
He's 40 carries and 164 yards in two tonight's play. All right, here we go in an eye formation again. It's a first, uh, well, second down and four. They didn't change the down box. There's a pass out to midfield. That's going to be a first down catch by Terrence McCoy at midfield at the 50. Most of the time tonight, occasionally a man-to-man, -man, but very seldom. Here's a throw out into the flats. That'll be McCoy. That's a catch. He's punished when he catches the ball. He'll get three. He just caught that at the ISU 46-yard line. So the Aggies going no huddle. They want to go quick. And here they go. Back to the line of scrimmage, and the handoff goes to Gray. Gray's going to be close. He did get the first down across the 40. He's to the ISU 38-and-a-half-yard line. Iowa State territory. No idle again. Single set back. Here's the pitch. Left side to Gray. He's being chased. Got by the first man. Cuts to his right to the 35-yard line. Picks up about three. 6'4", 322 is a freshman. So here we go with a flexed eye off to the left side. And it's play action by Johnson. Sets up. Long throw going end zone. He's got a man. That's McCoy. It's a touchdown. Texas A&M. It's the Terrence of the two McCoys. A great play action fake and then a roll back to the right for Gerard Johnson. And it was kind of a stop and then go for Terrence McCoy. And he's wide open in the end zone. A perfect delivery 35 yard completion and the Aggies are one point away from tying this one up with 740 left in the first quarter and nice drive a day for uh, Terrence that's his first touchdown of the season and now the extra point here by Bullock and he is five out of six here's the extra point up and it's good we got ourselves a tie ball game so see you at our place next uh, weekend and uh, we kick off there at uh, one o'clock here's a Skimmer on the kickoff being chased now all the way back to the three and now finally picked up. Looked like he was chasing a fly ball to the outfield wall there and runs out of bounds at about the 17-yard uh, line. He had a hard time trying to get a handle on that thing. They go with a flexed eye off to the left side is the fullback and a deep running back. Here's a throw to this side of the field. He threw it high. The intended receiver was Houston Jones. He's a junior who's got 22 receptions. And he's on the shotgun. Has a running back to his left, and they're going to stop the play. You I think can hear the whistles moved. and the flags. I think it's going to be a false start. Let's a see. Alexander Robinson was the uh, guy that may have flinched over there on the left false side of the running back. Number 93 of the offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. Actually, it was Carter Bykowski, who is second down and 15. 7.22 to go, first quarter. Tied at 7. I issue the ball at their own 12-yard line. They try the left side. Nothing working. That's Robinson. That'll bring up a third down, maybe a yard on that one. And then a left guard, 313, a junior, and the other tackle is 286, a sophomore. In the shotgun, play action. Arnott forced out of the pocket, running to this side of the field. Still wants to throw. He will. That's a catch across the 35. Out to the, about the 36, 37 yard line. Ball caught by Houston Jones, his second reception. First down and 10. And a half back to the left of Arnott is lined up a little bit behind him. Arnott's at the 31 and the half back at the 30. Here's a throw on the run, a catch across midfield to the Aggie 46 yard line. Colin Franklin and a, a nice completion for Arnott and uh, moves into Aggie territory. On the ground they go, the halfback has it. Nice hole, 40, 35, and he's brought down at the 31-yard line. With a slot to the left side, split in right. Halfback to his left, lined up behind him. In the shotgun again, Arnod standing at the Aggie 36. Steps one yard back, throws. That's almost picked off. Somebody deflected that at the line of scrimmage. Ashmark right side, two wides left, tied in on the left side of the formation, split in right, half back to the right, and Arnod will keep across the 30. And minimal yardage. He'll pick up uh, about four. He's out to, or down to the 27-yard line. And it's really a little bit more than five that what they're going to need here on this third down. Drops back to throw. The Aggies are coming up the middle. Here's the throw to the far sideline. First down across the 20 to the 17-yard line. Now uh, throwing the ball six out of eight. He's got 80 yards tonight. Throwing Arnod wants to throw here on this down. Steps up into the pocket. He's going to have to run with it as he crosses the line of scrimmage this time and brought down at the 17. So no gain, second down and 10. All right, Patterson, Moss, and Tony Gerard Eddy in the front. You got Von Miller and Featherston, a couple of lines. And we got a bunch of DBs back there. Second down, 10. Dave just told you it's a, a draw, and there's a good hole up the middle across the 15 to about the 13-yard line. That's Robinson. And tackle by Tony Gerard Eddy. Their thirds tonight, ISU three out of three. And for the season, they're 31% on their third down conversions. Wants to throw. He will. It's a catch. No, he dropped it. it. And a flag. 
Two flags. At the five, incomplete. Ball in and out of the arms of R.J. Sumrall went right into his gut and then fell away from him. Now they call it an interference, but we don't know if it's offense or defense. Let's see. Could have been a push off by the receiver. Oh, yes, it it's is. It's against ISU, and that's on Sumrall. He pushed off. I suppose the Aggies will, or they're going to take the penalty. They will move it from the about the 13-yard line back across the 25, all the way back here to the 28-yard uh, line. The Aggie 28 hash mark right side, and bring up a third down. And next week, Ten. third and 21, they've got to get it to the Aggie seven. Here's a screen, and they throw it. Caught at the 30, 25, going sideline and out of bounds, and knock him out across the 15 at about the A&M 14-yard line. Ball caught by Robinson screen right side. Yeah, and he has a long of 48 against Kent State. Like you said, 10 of 15, Grant Mahoney, the field goal kicker. Here's the snap, here's the hold, here's the kick, and he pulled it left. Yeah, he pulled it bad, no good. You know and what? They just uh, they just made a switch on us. That was uh, Brantner, uh, Tom, and he was kicking his first field goal of a year. Well, there we All right, here we go, and the Aggies in an eye formation. We'll hand off 20 to about the 22-yard line. We'll go Cyrus Gray. First down and 10 will go to a second down and eight now at the 22. Time. Back to the line of scrimmage, no huddle. Nick Lamonti is the fullback, and they just hand it off to Gray. Oh, tripped over uh, uh, somebody's leg as he got to the 25, or he might have got more out of that. And as a result, picks up only about three. So at the 25, it's third down at five. Yeah, a single setback, motion. It was McCoy. And here's the pitch. We're going to the left side. A stiff arm, and he dives. Did he get the first down? He's going to be just shy. Ooh, I don't Keonda like that spot. Uh, we're going for it. And it will be Lamantia. And here's the handoff. It's Keandra. First down, A&M on a fourth down. Convert to a first of the 32. That's gutsy. That's a gutsy call. They, they got in there quickly and surprised ISU. Keandra very quickly with Keandra Smith standing to his right. Trips to the right. Single setback on the uh, left side. Of, of receiver here is a free play, and we're going to throw it out of bounds as uh, Gerard is chased all the way back to the Aggie 15. There is a flag. I think they caught one of the ISU defenders in the neutral zone. Yeah, they jumped, and uh, the ball was snapped. Offsides, defense, number 47. Five-yard penalty, first down. And Grimes is playing a tackle. Matthews, Ike, and Schumard are the other guys. There's a flag down, and we're throwing deep to this sideline. That's Fuller. Will he get it away from the defender flag? There's a flag down in the back, or at the line of scrimmage. That's There's an a offside. flag down here at the 27-yard line. The one back here is an offside. I don't know what this one is over here. It could go either way. They both went up for the ball. It's going to be... Uh, Offensive pass interference against Texas A&M. And then an offside back here. There are two fouls on the play. Offsides, number 56 of the defense. Pass interference on the offense. Those penalties offset. First down. Split in on the left side. Ball the middle of the field. And Gerard saying something here as he's calling perhaps an audible. Has it? Play action. Rolls right. Throws. Catch at the 40. That'll be a, about a three-yard pickup. And the ball caught by Ryan Tannehill. That's his first catch of the night. It's actually one and a half to pick up the first. In the eye, the handoff, Keandra. Lowers his head as he hits the line of scrimmage. Got the first down to the Aggie 45. A pickup there of about four. So Keandra turns a, was it a second down into a uh, first down at the AM 45-yard line. Time here now, 15 seconds to go in the first period. 7-7 seven is our score. That'll be the last play of the first quarter. We, uh, and here's the first down play. Shotgun. With Gray to the right of the quarterback, Gerard Johnson. Slot left, slot right. Long snap count. There it is. Drops back to the, here's the shovel pass. It goes to Gray, and they're all over that. A yard from the 35 to the 36. Shovel pass, Gray, one yard, second down nine coming up. Trips left, split in. And make it a flanker right side. And here's Jamie, the tight end on the right. Play action by Gerard. A throw, a catch. First down, AM. We're across midfield, across the 40 to the 37 yard line. That's caught by Jamie. And for Jamie McCoy, 22 receptions for the year. McCoy, and they're going without a huddle. But Gerard found him over the middle, and he, had to, he was rolling left and had to throw across his body. That's a great throw. 
First down and 10, the Aggies. Here's Gerard wanting to throw. He does. He's got McCoy. He's at the 10. He's at the 5. He is a touchdown. 37 yards. Well, that's the vulnerability of that two deep zone. You, you run the tight end right down the middle, and you and you run your uh, wide receivers down the outside. Those guys have to, the, it leaves a linebacker to cover it. He didn't. And uh, Gerard Johnson found McCoy and hit him right in stride. Touchdown, Aggies. That one will go 37 yards for the touchdown. Three touchdowns now for the year for Jamie, the junior squadsman from Midland Lee. Here's the extra point by Bullock, spotted down by Brantley, up in good. And the Aggies have their first lead here at 14-7. to seven. All right, so that's next Saturday, but next the Saturday. women at four tomorrow afternoon. Four right? tomorrow, that's right. We'll uh, do that a couple of more times here tonight. Here's the kickoff. It's into the wind, and Summerall will come up and take it to the 13. Starts his return back to the right side, cuts it now to the middle of the field, and runs into a couple of Aggies there at the 31 yard line. So RJ Summerall on that one. <laughs> Here's first down and 10 for ISU. Handoff, right side, good yardage across the 35 to the 38 yard line. Finally brought down by Garrick Williams, the freshman redshirt from DeSoto, who came in to play tonight with 27 tackles. In the shotgun one more time. Not deep as he stands behind his center. Does Arnod play action? Nope, he handed off. It goes to Scales. He has a first down. He's across the 40. He is to the ISU 45 yard line. 13 14 to go. Rushed it now 13 times, 88 yards. Shotgun one more time, running back to his right. Play action by Arnod's going to throw, and that's a catch across the 40. Great catch, good tackle. Hunter makes the tackle. The catch is made by Darius Darks. He's from Austin Connolly High School. First down, Sumrall, Jones, Darks, Hamilton are the receivers. And they have a single setback here off to the right side. I think that scales again. It is. Steps up, Arnod did to the line. And he's going to keep, and he is wrapped up. Broke a tackle. There's a flag down. He's got a 25, cutting back to this side of the field. 20 being chased, now ridden into the turf across the 15 at the Aggie 12. Flag back at the 41-yard line. And where that is, it's likely going to be either a block in the back or a hold, but uh, they never should have let Arnold out of this trap. They had him stopped for a, about a two-yard loss. Right now at the 12-yard line is where the ball is. And they've asked the official who's standing on the ball to come over and say something. Personal foul, Personal foul. face mask, oh. and the 77 of the defense. At the distance, first down. To the six yard line from the 12 will go the ball. Moves under center, has a deep eye back. That scales, he's standing back at the 14. Line of scrimmage is the six yard line. And that guy got it, somewhat of a delay. Fell down, lost a yard back at the seven. Started to move into the line of scrimmage. His feet deserted. And he goes down, and then Tony Gerard Eddy will complicate things by falling on top of Scales. Halfback to his right, Arnod is the quarterback on the shotgun. Standing at the 12, has it, and he gave it to Scales. Breaks the tackle, crosses the five, goes to about the two-yard line. Scales is going to come with an eye. They've got a, a uh, tight end back here as a, a fullback. They'll give it to Scales, pitch left. Good lead block, touchdown. Since then, 160 and 151. And 151 was against uh, UNLV. Here's the extra point. It's up and it's good. And that again is going to be Brantner, who is the putter. So he kicks it and he ties it. Both, uh, well, Stevens at the five and Gray at the two. Wind at their back now on this one. And here we go. Good kick, but not that deep. At the three, Gray. 10, 15, 20, cuts left, 30, uh, and a flag down, 34-yard line. There is a flag down. But man, that was way off from where the ball actually was, it was something at the 34-yard line. It was something on the way down. I don't think it was on no, the way you know coming what? back. That flag was already there. That's that's not a flag. That, I think that was uh, part of somebody's uniform. <laughs> All, right. All right, first down and 10 at the Aggie 34. I formation. And Nick Lamonti is the fullback. Going to be a split to the uh, left side, and Stevens will get a yard to the 35. Lamonti leading the blocking. Second nine for AM at their 35 yard line. Tied here at 14. There's a pass to this side after play action. It's uh, Terrence, and he's across the 40. He dives forward, trying to get the ball to the 44. But they say a knee went down at the 42, so he's shy of a first down. This game tonight, the Aggies are one out of two. 
And we're bunched up tight to the line with a slot on each side. A throw. That is a first down. That's Jamie McCoy at the 45. Bounced and knocked into the Aggie sideline on this side of the field at the 46. Come back to the line. The handoff is, is that Bradley again? I believe it is. Yes. It's Bradley Stevens, and he goes to the 48-yard line. That's a pickup of a couple. Slide right, and they've got uh, two to the left. Here's a throw. This sideline again. Terrence can't hang on. It would have been close for a first down at about the ISU 45-yard line. Knocked out of the hands of Terrence McCoy. Good defensive play that time by Kennard Banks. And a third down, AM. Two out of three, third down efficiency. Empty in the backfield, a throw, a catch. That's Jamie, and that's going to be a first down at the ISU 43 yard line. The two McCoy brothers having a great night here in Ames. They fail well, to get this now. Jamie has caught four for 66, and uh, Terrence four for 51. Here's the snap in an eye. It goes to Cyrus, and Gray will carry for a yard to the 42. It's going to be a second and nine at the ISU 42-yard line. One to the left. Short side of the formation is the top as we're looking at it. Half back to the right of uh, quarterback Johnson. Will throw. He's got a man this side. Oh, just out of the grasp here of Jamie McCoy at the ISU 22 incomplete. High formation, half back to the right. Slot left, two wides to the right. Here's a throw, and he's got a man. That's a catch, 29-yard line, 25-20, 19-yard line. Caught by Howard Morrow, and they spot him at the 20. How about that play? Goes 22 yards. Aggies are back at the line of scrimmage. First catch tonight. No huddle, eye formation, a throw, and that's a catch. And there's a tackle broken. It's the Fuller. Oh, he just stepped out. Stepped out of bounds at the 8-yard line. He was tight roping it on this sideline. And that was caught, I guess, over the middle day. That ball just all of a sudden appeared in his hands. The Aggies have it, a first and goal at the ISU eight-yard line. 7.15 to go, tied at 14, first half. And his play action by Johnson. He's going to keep and get maybe a yard from about the eight, maybe the seven-yard line. Here's a second and goal at the ISU seven. Flags, they're going to stop the play. Here's a throw. That's to Tannehill. And he caught it about a yard deep. Would have been a touchdown, but they're going to stop it. It's going to be a penalty against Texas A&M. Ball start. Number four of the offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. All right, Jamie McCoy gets caught there. Here we go. Second down and goal. Move it back to the 12-yard line. Favors hash mark left side. Empty in the backfield for Gerard. Wants to throw. He will. That's Jamie. It's a touchdown. Texas A&M McCoy. Well, that's a mismatch when you get McCoy working against the linebacker, and that's exactly what happened. It was the middle linebacker, Jesse Smith. He could not stay with McCoy. A good delivery by Gerard Johnson right over the middle. That's a 12-yard completion for the touchdown for the Aggies, and they take the lead 20-14 to with the point to come. He's got five for 78. He had five for 60 against Army and a touchdown. So Jamie now five for 78 and two TDs. The extra point is up and it is good. And kicking into the wind here. Got a return man at the five and one back at the three. Summerall and Johnson. See what he does with this one. It's very high. They're going to make him come up here. That ball's going to hit, and uh, it's been fumbled, and I think A&M may have gotten that thing. It hit a high and came down at the 25. The return man couldn't get it, and the Aggies just got a fumble recovery at the 27-yard line. It looks like Amos Gungley is the one that got it. Well, they kicked it. It's a pooch kick, and what they're trying to do is get some height and make them run up to catch it. They couldn't run up and catch it. The ball hit the ground, and just as the receiver got his hands on it, it, he was hit, and the Aggies will pick up the ball at the 27-yard line on the fumble recovery by Gumbly. And here we go, empty in the backfield at the 27-yard line on the turnover. Here is a sack, and now the ball has been fumbled by Gerard, and they're going to give it right back to him. He was hit from the backside at the 40. The ball came free, and the man that hit him recovered it at the 40. Where is the spot? No spot so far. 41, I think, is where they're going to put it. Rumpel Hammer is the man that uh, got the sack and the fumble recovery. Well, the Aggies dodged a bullet here. They lost the football, but he could have picked that ball up, and it would have been a foot race between an offensive lineman and a defensive lineman to the end zone. So Iowa State gets it at the 41. Blown opportunity there for the Aggies. 
in point blank range to put put a couple of touchdown lead on the on the uh, Cyclones. All right, here we go. Give it back to him now at the 41. It's an end around going back to the right side. Now it's a halfback pass. That's a catch across the 45 at the Aggie 42 yard line. A little razzle dazzle. It's a, a completion in Aggie territory at the 42. A first down for ISU. And again, it's a handoff end around going back to the right side. Good open field tackle. And that will be made by Trent Hunter. No gain on that carry. Under five to go in the first half, and it's 21-14. It's Texas A&M. Shotgun, halfback left. Here's a throw and batted up in the air by Michael Bennett. It was a screen right. Bennett got a big paw on it, knocked it down. Third down, same 11 coming up for ISU. Down after he intercepted the ball to Texas Tech. And I said, yeah, you're making us nervous. Slot left. And it's play action by Arnod throwing the ball. And a catch first down across the 30 at the Aggie 29-yard line. Terrence Frederick defensively. Sumrall was the guy that caught it. Now they will break that and go to uh, two wideouts, a slot left and a slot right. There's the snap. Sets his pocket, lofting one. And he throws it over the head and out of bounds at the intended receiver that time. Joel Zytek, who was a redshirt junior. That was Hamilton, by the way, 82 that threw that halfback pass. And now Arnott is 9 of 13 throwing the ball in the shotgun. He just gave it to the halfback. They try scales, and he gets maybe the 26. That's going to be a pickup of a couple. Third down and eight coming up. Here we go on a third down. And for tonight, they are five of six on their third downs. And a shotgun, two wides right, split into the left. Play action. And here is some pressure. And a sack of Arnod back outside the 30 at the 34-yard line. Michael Bennett from the defensive left side. Well, it never occurred to me they do that, so I'm hustling to get back here behind the goalpost. Okay. <laughs> Here's Brander. And there's the uh, kick, and it's going to be wide right. Oh. Had the distance, and uh, all three timeouts remaining. 21-14, Texas A&M leads. First down and 10 at their 34. to throw to this sideline, and that's Terrence again. And he's caught and dropped after, and he got it to the 40, and got two more to the 42-yard line. Right back they come to the 42-yard line. He's got five catches, 59. On the ground we go. And it's Cyrus across the 45, and somebody got an ankle on him, reached out with his foot. And with his ankle, he tripped him up, and he fell forward to the 49-yard line. That's a first down, however, for Texas A&M. All right, two wides each side of the formation. And it's first and 10 against uh, Aggie 49. 2.10 to go. He wants to throw. He will, and it's a catch, and that's Tannehill across the 40 at the ISU 36-yard line. First and 10, Texas A&M. He went out of bounds, gained 15 on that one. Tannehill beat the, that coverage on a short corner, and it's a first down for the Aggies. Three wides left, that's the open side. In the shotgun, half back left, here's a screen, and he threw it right at the feet of Gray. He had a lot of, uh, a whole lot of pressure, and he had Johnson to dump that off in a hurry. Arby's was gonna take a sack. So, fighting Texas Aggie Band, you are missed here in Ames, Iowa. All right, here's a second down and 10, a throw. Tannehill reaching back and bringing that one in for a nine yard catch for the 27 yard line. It will be third and a yard coming up, Texas A&M ISU 27. Time, a minute 30 to go until halftime. Ryan Tannehill's a magician. This was a heck of a catch. They're back to the line of scrimmage. Hand off, it's on the ground, and that's great. At the third, he's going to score a touchdown. Five, he's in the zone. That's what I want to see from Cyrus Gray. Great patience. He was right up the line of scrimmage, right up in the middle of the line of scrimmage. Got a block coming from his right to his left. Cut back off that block and then streak to the end zone. And that will go 27 yards for the touchdown and give the Aggies the 13-point lead. Point to cut with a minute 22 left here in the half. They took a minute, 29 seconds to get that into the uh, end zone on that uh, six-play drive. And Tom will recap it here in a moment. How about that, though? Here's the extra up, and it's good. And the Aggies have just made it a 28-14 to 14 lead. All right, here we go. With the two kickoff. catches, Dave, two catches on that drive for Ryan Tannehill, and one of them was a magic catch. Oh, leaning back. Here's that high kick again into that win. They're calling for a fair catch, and they take it at the 26-yard line. And that's one of the tight ends who is one of the upbacks in that return formation. In the shotgun, halfback right. And two bunched up each side. And he's going to run with it. He's to the 30. He is to the 40. He's to the 45. Finally, the Aggies jump on his back. And the man that caught him was Cyril Obazor. 
They're back to the huddle. Or back to the line of scrimmage. I Open side to the left. Slot both sides of the formation. Steps back. Oh, he just got hit and goes down. Sacked by Cyril Obazor at the 41-yard line. That's a loss on the play of about six. Second down, 16. Ball at the 41. It's the ISU side. Here's a tackle at the line of scrimmage. ISU side of the 50. And that tackle made that time by Tony Gerard Eddy. They're taking a lot of time to get the play off the sideline into the game to Arnott. There's the snap. Sets his pocket. Now he decides to run. He's coming back to this side. The Aggies chase him. He goes down near midfield at the 49. And now time, 12 seconds, way 11 short. seconds. Way short of the first down. This will be a fourth down play if they go. It'll be fourth and 10. And we're five seconds, five, four, four seconds. They're going to let time run out. Let it go. Oh, the home crowd, homecoming crowd didn't like that at all. Wait a minute. We're, they stopped it with two seconds left. Apparently, they want to throw a Hail Mary here. Frederick, Hunter, Dixon, Greg, Gore, and Brown are the DBs. Fourth down play, two seconds until halftime. Steps up. Now I have forced out of the pocket, rolling to the right. He's all the way back at the 35, throwing now. And it is a catch, and out of bounds they go at the 30. Would have been a third. Where's the flag? Right back here. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number 55 of the defense. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. One on time down. Okay. No and uh, this is Mahoney. Mahoney's right. going right. to kick it. Okay, Tom, at the 22 effort back, 32-yard uh, effort, and it's back to his left. Yeah. I thought I saw 21 trot out there the last time. Okay, here we go. This will be his first okay. kick of the night. Here's the snap, the hole, the kick, and he made that one. So he is good for his efforts tonight. And, guys, we just gifted them three points just like that. Last play of the half, and that's got to give them some momentum. We got 28 to 17. That's your halftime score after the field goal. All right. And here we go. a and going to receive to start the second half. 28-17, Aggies. Kickoff is going to go through the end zone got the wind at their back tonight and you said you had uh, halftime weather somewhere on the next level uh, and with the uh, media and from our sports news department in the shotgun a throw it goes out to the 24 yard line and forced out of bounds they're going to give him the 25 and that's fuller who was riding the bike only a few moments ago now he's out there on the field and he got a five yard pickup a 28 17 a and lead gave him a field goal right there with no time in the first half uh, clock Here's the handoff. Gray stops, then starts up again, and boy, somebody slings him to the ground after a two-yard pickup, maybe three to the 28-yard line. All right, third down. Well, the Aggies, five of six. Third downs, first half. Shotgun, two wides each side. Open side to the right. Roll this direction. A throw, and is that uh, Keandra Smith at the 32 on his back, reached out, extended his arms, and it landed right between those two palms, and he hangs on. Down, first down and 10. The Aggies now out to the 33. Hash right, eye formation. Throwing, here's the throw, and that's a catch, and that out of the backfield is Javorski Lane, and he will catch it for about a two-yard pickup, maybe three to the 36. Need to get it to the 42 and a little bit more than that on the ground and it swarmed and now got away from one tackler and not a second or a third and that's gray and he stopped there by jesse smith that's the initial hit and then a bunch of his teammates we're going to lose all the way back inside the 35 at the 33 and a half and here we go halfbacks both sides to the left is lane to the right i believe that's keandra third down and nine it's been snapped has time, steps up, going to throw. Here it is. That's a first down catch, and that'll be Tannehill across the 45 out to the Aggie 48-yard line. Long snap count, first down and 10. A&M at their 49, half back to the left of Gerard Johnson. Play action. He throws wide open at the 40 and now to the 38-yard line. Is that Jamie? That's Jamie McCoy at the ISU 38. Gerard doing a great job of picking apart this defense. They came with a six-man rush that time. He found Jamie quickly over the middle for the completion. The two brothers combined 10 catches, 137 yards, first half. Throw to the sideline, and that's Jeff Fuller, and that's a catch. That will be about a four-yard pickup. He bounced as he caught it at the ISU 34-yard line. So the McCoys 10 catches, 137 yards, three touchdowns in the first half. Most productive ever by a brother tandem in Texas A&M school history. Second down play. Need about seven. Here's a throw, and it almost picked off. Down around the 10-yard line, Morrow, the intended receiver, and Brandon Hanley 
Might have had a quick six had he picked that. Three wides left, two to the right. He'll take the snap standing at the 39. Here they Pressure come. up the middle. He's going to throw it away. Out to the 21-yard line. They were coming up the middle, and he had to dump it off. Morrow was close by at the 20. Brandley now will take the snap at the 50. His average into the game tonight, 47-1. He's number three in the nation. He's going to pooch it high in the air. And the Ags have a man down there. Shankle will catch it at the one-yard line, and it did not go into the end zone, and they're going to kill it at the one. How about that? What a weapon Justin Brantley is. He... A punt to the two, and now they get away from the goal line out to the 18. Here's the snap, and they're going to run to the right side all the way out to the 15. Drug down as he crosses the 20. And that time it was Alexander Robinson in the backfield taking the snap direct from the center. Well, here's a second down. This time Arnod in the shotgun directly behind the center. Throws back to the right side. That's a catch, and they'll bounce him out of bounds at the 25-yard line. That is Colin Franklin, one of the tight ends. The Aggies now seven out out of nine on their thirds tonight. Line of scrimmage, the 25, need the 28. Arnott wants to throw, steps up, he does, and here is a uh, missed tackle and a catch at the 28 across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Half back to the left, lined up about two yards behind Arnod. Play action, here's a quick throw, and that's a catch. That's out near midfield. That's at the 49 on the ISU side of the 50. That was Catlett who caught it, and Devin Gregg stopped him. They now have run 44 plays, 347 yards. The Aggies 47 plays, 321. First down, 10 at the 49. It's on the ground, and maybe a yard, perhaps. Yeah, about a yard to the 50. That's Robinson again. When he kicked it down to the uh, two-yard line and was killed. Here's the second down, and it's quarterback draw, Arnod. He's using a bunch of the offensive linemen to push his way to the 41-and-a-half-yard line, close for a first down. All right, here we go, third down, very short. And Arnod's going to sneak for it, and he'll get it across the 40 to the 39. 7-17 to go in the third quarter. Rush the ball now, Dave. 28 times tonight, 151 yards. First down, 10 at the Aggie, 39. On the ground after a handoff to is that Robinson again it is and he's pushed all the way back to the 40 but they're going to net him a couple from the 39 to the 37 they're playing on the Aggie side of the 50 now three to the right side two lined up one behind the other roll right throw the ball catch and out, not dropped, dropped it. it had his back to us and was moving toward the sideline and couldn't hang on Aggies have the lead here 28 17 shotgun two wides right. Drops back, Arnott under pressure, throws a catch, fighting for a first down, falls across the 30, and stretches out to the 28-yard line. That's Catlett, the tight end. Well, they stack one behind the other out on the hash mark, top side. Roll right, Arnott looking, cocks his arm, throws the football. That's a catch, that's a first down across the 15. And out of bounds, nope, they did not get out. He's down at the 14-yard line. They got a guy going to the right side. They want him over here to the left, and they're having to take some time here to get him over here. He's way left. They've got two stacked here on the left side. Fakes right. Now rolls right, throws low at the five-yard line, incomplete. Actually, he had looked back to his left and thought about throwing in that direction and then started to the right and threw low at the five, incomplete. And again, three to the left. That's the open side. Split in right. On the ground, they go to Robinson at the 10, backs his line. That'll be a five-yard carry. They need the four, so it's third down five coming up. Showing right here, I think his best game's been 44 until tonight. Here's third down and five at the nine, looking to the end zone. Actually, at that, oh, incomplete. Dropped at it. about the four-yard line. That was Darius Darks, incomplete. Couldn't hang on. Are they just alternating kickers? What, Mahoney, the last Okay, kicker? Tom, it's going to be spotted at the uh, 16. It's a 26-yard effort. Right. I think this is Mahoney, number 21 here, Dave, and it is a slight angle to the left. Here's the snap, the hole, the kick, and he made another one. So he's two for two tonight. 
Okay, a freshman career record, uh, our freshman record for Texas A&M. Been set by Tannehill now. Look at that in the moment. Here's the kickoff. Got a chance to return it, but that wind is back at the seven-yard line. It's Gray back to the 20. Stop. Starts up again. Looking wide to the left side, crosses the 25, goes to the 27-yard line. 3 o'clock Monday, 3 o'clock Tuesday, 6 o'clock on Wednesday night at beautiful Olsen. First down 10, the Aggies at their 27-yard line. 28 to 20 is the score. a &M leads. Here's a throw. And I think that's a catch at the 32-yard line. Caught by Jeff Fuller and tackled by Leonard Johnson. Split into the right, eye formation, and give it to the tailback, and they will wrap him up. That's great. A yard, maybe two yards to the 34. Third down, two at the 35-yard line. They need the 37. Go empty in the backfield. Johnson throws a catch, and he's going to get a first down to Fuller. They're going to net him the 38-yard line. Good nights going. McCoy, six catches. Fuller, six catches. Another McCoy, five catches. First down, 10. Drops back from center. Pumps one. Looks back to the left side. Over the middle. It's a catch at the 37. Back to the 35-30. Fuller out of bounds. He'll go knocked into the sideline at the ISU. Yard line. Fuller. Uh, this is a great read by Gerard Johnson. Play action fake, and he found Fuller over the middle. This one goes for 43 yards, but a perfect throw got behind the linebackers in the zone coverage and in front of the deep men, and then able to break a tackle, pick up a block from Terrence McCoy, and move it down to the 19. In the eye we go, and this is Keandra forcing his way to the 10. Close for a first down, kept pushing, and he got it to the 9, and I believe that's an Aggie first and goal is to put a lot of pressure. Here's down to three. A lot of pressure on the uh, defense by getting the team to the line of scrimmage in a hurry. Johnson's going to run out of a shotgun, steps back and goes across the five, and he's at the three-yard line. That was a first and goal at the nine. Saw nothing to throw to in the zone. Steps up and then runs here to the right side. A gain down to the three. That picked up six. Empty in the backfield. Three wides left. One of those is Jamie McCoy. They got Tannehill wide right. And a quarterback draw. Here is Gerard forcing his way inside the one. A third and goal. Game. Here they come to the line of scrimmage. Gerard's under center. There's the snap. It goes to Jaborski. Touchdown, Texas A&M. Oh, Nobody folks. touched him as he just jumped out to the right side. Let me tell you why they didn't touch him. Nick Lamantia just creamed the, the uh, corner man. Uh, what a great block, lead block by Nick Lamantia. He buried the containment, and Jaborski waltzes into the end zone. 300-yard passing game tonight for Gerard Johnson. 311 yards. I just made it 34 to 20, and now the extra point here by Bullock. Bradley holes. It's up, and it is good. That's a 35 to 20, 15-point Texas A&M lead. Those boogers. Here we go. Not good. Derek Catlett on the fair catch. And as go. Dave told you, boy, a great block by uh, Lamantia there on that left side that cleared uh, for the touchdown. They're going to throw a halfback pass. They've already, they're going to throw it back to Arnott. It's a double pass. Back at the 30, the 40, and now across the 40 to the 42. All right, and for ISU now 23. We've got 41 seconds left in the third. It's a quarterback draw. And is that Arnott or was that? Yes. Uh, okay, he did Robinson step back. No, and went to the take it back. Arnott Robinson. was lined out as a wide receiver. They Direct snap. snap. Yeah, back to the uh, tailback, and he advances for two from the 43 to the 45. Right. Second down and eight. Arnott will stand at the 40. Line of scrimmage, the 45. Play action, throws. That's a catch, and that'll be a first down all the way to the Aggie 30-yard line. Caught by Darks. And finally tackled by Garrick Williams at the 29s, the official spot. First and 10, ISU had to settle for a field goal. And here's a throw to this side that's off the hands of the intended receiver, and it is a forward pass that went incomplete behind the line of scrimmage, but he was up close enough past where the quarterback, Arnott, had thrown dark. They've got 24 first downs tonight. They're at the Aggie 29. And here's Arnott under some pressure, and he had to dump the ball off before he could throw it to anybody. Where's the flag? There wasn't a receiver out there. 
Threw it out here to the right side, and the guy that hit him that time was Danny Gore. There it Gore. is. I, it had to come. There wasn't a receiver anywhere near where he threw it. Intentional, Intentional grounding. grounding. Number four of the offense. Good call, Lost Dave. Him down at the spot of the foul. All right, third down and 24. Half back left. Arnod calling an audible. Sets his pocket, hits, and trying to get away. Did he fumble the ball? They're wrestling for it. Who has it? It's back at the 49-yard line. Who's got the ball? The Aggies saying they've got it, and now the referee, Greg Burks, says it indeed. It is A&M's ball, and Von Miller just took it away from Arnod. Big rush by the D-line. They didn't bring any, any extra rush that time. Just the four-man they get to Arnon, not only do they get to him, but they're able to strip the ball, and they'll have possession at the 48-yard line. Timeout. Officials. ISU. Aggies have it after the turnover. They picked it up. They'll fumble at their own 48-yard line. Two halfbacks. Here is Gerard on play action. Started right, goes back to his left, looking down the field. Now he's going to run to the sideline and out of bounds, and a yard pick up from the 48 to the 49 after all is said and done. Halfback right, it's going to be Bradley Stevens. Or is that Keandra? It's either 20 or 26. It's Bradley, and he got the handoff. Somebody's got him as he hits the 50, and he gets two yards from the, actually three, from the 49 to the ISU 48. Third down coming up in about seven for the Aggies. Shotgun for Johnson. Slot left, up close to the line. Wide right with a slot in that direction. Like they might have been coming. The Aggies pick it up. Gerard starts up. Now he's going to run with the ball. Somebody's chasing him. First down slides into second base at the 38 yard line for a first down, Texas AM. He does the smart thing by down, sliding in, boy. In. Don't get a hit. First down and 10 now at the 38. Handoff. And uh, I'll get a number on that. The minute it's going to be Gray. Cyrus to the 37 yard line. And we've got two here on the left side. The left is the open side. That's the bottom of the formation as we look at it from the press box. Play action by Gerard. A throw. And that's it McCoy. Is. It's Jamie. Cross the 20. He's to the 18-yard line. And that just put him up above 100 yards for the night. He went 19. He needed nine to hit 100. And now McCoy moves up on the line. And he moves Tannehill back to the backfield. Wants to throw, and there it is, and that is Tannehill. He's at the five. That's an Aggie first down. Tannehill at the five-yard line. Season high in points. The snap to Gerard. Play action. Carries. Touchdown! He got hit maybe one time as he made his way into the end zone, fell across the goal line, and hit pay dirt. Well, and just made it 41-20. to 20. And a nice block that time by Keandre. It was a play. And fake to Keandra. He went up into the line, and Gerard followed him right in there. Keandra made the nice block. He cut off that block and into the end zone. Touchdown, Aggies. 11-27 to go in the game, and the Aggies now have a 21-point advantage, trying to go 22 here with Bullock's extra points. Brantley's holding for him. Snapped down, up, and it is good. Count it. It's Texas A&M 42, and the Cyclones 20. They are headed home. And now the kickoff. And put this one uh, out of the end zone. They hit a cameraman down there, so they'll bring it out to the 20. We've got a little chicken fight going here at about the 42-yard line. 1 o'clock at our place, Kyle Field next Saturday, broadcast at 12 noon. In the shotgun, Arnod steps up. He lofts one. He throws a little bit high at the 30-yard line. And defensively, one of the Aggies, that was Terrence Frederick, or Terrence Frederick that made sure that Houston Jones didn't hang on to it in 2005 with what they're showing here tonight at 411. And A&M's total offense now is 446. There's a throw. Did somebody get a hand on that? It was it was Michael Bennett uh, on the... No, I'm sorry. That was Eddie Brown uh, coming clean on the screen pass, and he got his hands up, able to knock it down on the middle screen. It's kind of an interesting story on Eddie Brown because he really recruited uh, Mike Sherman. <laughs> he wanted to come to A&M so bad. Here's play action by Arnod. Back at the 10, throws. Nice diving catch. Across the 35 and down at the 39, caught by R.J. Sumrall, and that was a great catch on a low throw. You got 10:55 to go in the game. Your Aggies lead 42 to 20 over Iowa State. Drops back, throws a catch. That ought to be the tight end. It is. He's out to the 48-yard line where they say he hit, and then he rolled to the 49. Not a first down. That's Catlett. He'll be a yard shy at the 48 for ISU in receiving. Here's second down and a yard, and they go on the ground, and I don't know if they he picked didn't up. Get there.
slipped and fell. And that was Robinson, and he went down at the line of scrimmage, the 48-yard line. Third down of that same yard coming up. Oh, he had some high-scoring games today in the uh, Big 12. Here's third down. Arnaud's going to sneak for it, and he is across the 49, but not quite the 50. Kellen Hurd upended him, but he just kept stretching out to get that first down. There's some defense. First down and 10 at midfield for ISU. There's some pressure by Bennett. Couldn't get to Arnott. Arnott sprints out left side, 45, 40, slides down. And where did he touch? He went down at the Aggie 41 and a half. Not a first down. They'll face a second down and a yard and a half. We are four yards away from both teams combined having 900 yards of total offense tonight. Arnott rolls, stops. He's at the 50. He's throwing deep. Aggies have a man defensively, and that's uh, that Frederick. Frederick going up, and he uh, had the defense. Ball was a little, a little high for Hamilton, and nobody really is going to catch that. But uh, Frederick was back there with him, and he knocked it away from him. So bring up third in about one. Hamilton's big game was against Iowa earlier this year. He had seven receptions. Here's a draw. Stop for a moment. Robinson, he picks up the first down. He's to the Aggie 38, picked up three. Somebody got an arm on him up around the chest. That was that was enough to slow him up, but not to stop him. First down, Iowa State got 453 yards of total offense. So at the Aggie 38, halfback right, has his snap. Arnaud steps up. Good throw. That's a catch. That's a first down. He's across the 20. He's got a flag down. What's that for? That's way that was a good city. lick, Jonathan Batson. Johnson caught it. And a flag down from the secondary against Texas, well, either against Texas A&M or against Iowa State. I have no idea what that was. That this like may be the first time this year we've been uh, we've had that helmet-to-helmet call. Oh, uh, do you think so? I can't believe it, but that may be what they're it looks calling. Looks like they just went face-to-face. -face. Personal foul on the defense, number 26. Illegal helmet contact. Half the distance. That's it. First down. I hate that call. Well... Yeah. I hate the rule. Yeah. I hate the rule. A personal foul. I want to make sure. I'm not faulting the official. I just hate the rule. Yeah. It's a first and goal for ISU just across the Aggie 10. Pumps, throw an end zone, got a man, and he overthrew him. He was wide open. That was intended for Hamilton. But he just overthrew him. It went uh, past the end line. Clock has stopped on the incomplete. 7.48 to go in the game. Arnott, a halfback, lined up behind him to the left. Quarterback draw. Arnott to the five. Arnott to the three. Arnott dives in. Touchdown. They got close enough to be within eight, and they needed the two, but they're going to go for it now. See what they do. Three wides to the right. Arnott's rolling to the right. He's going to throw, and that's a catch, and that's good for two. And that's going to be caught by Darius Darks right at the goal line. They got three guys over here at the 25. Now a fourth guy, and then the kicker. High up in the air. It's not going to go the necessary 10 yards, and it is kicked. And I think Iowa State may have got that thing. It hit one of the Aggies and bounced off of him. And then right in front of their bench, Iowa State recovered the ball at their 37-yard line. An onside kick. And Darius Darks, we think, is the guy who got it. AM came up to get it. It didn't go the necessary 10, but they came up to try to make a play on it. And now the officials are having a confab over there. Three of them, along with the referee at the of the ball, we went out of bounds. I just saw the replay. Ah, here you go. It's gonna get it's gonna be AM's ball. Maybe a uh, review. Let's see what happens here. They're going to call time, and they're explaining it now to Gene Jezik, who is the uh, head coach. Previous for play him. is under further review. Here we go. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, a &M. First down and 10 with an eye formation. Aggies with the ball and the lead, 7.42 to go. Play action. Gerard looking to throw, dancing, rolling right, does throw it now, and it's off the fingertips of the receiver, Ben Bass, for Texas A&M at the ISU 37-yard line. 7.36. Here's a throw. That's a catch. That's Tannehill. Step by the first man. He's at the 20 there, coming in on him, and out of bounds they go at the 15-yard line and a flag from deep in the secondary. Tannehill the catch at the 15 and rolls into the sideline, holding against Texas a &M. I think it's going to be uh, Terrence McCoy trying to block for Tannehill, but what a nice, uh, a, a nice move by Tannehill as he catches the ball and then, then spins back outside and uh, is able to pick up big yards. This, some of this is going to come back. 
Uh, it's going to come back to the 25 yard line. It'll still be a first down for the Aggies. Okay, so first, at first he said second down, and then he said first down. Down to nine, and it's an eye formation. Nick Lamantia is the fullback. Cyrus Gray is the tailback. Cyrus got the handoff, and he will net a, boy, he's close, a first down at the 15. Maybe just a little bit shy. We'll give him nine on the carry. Seven. Quarterback sneak. Yep. And that will be the call, and to the 14-yard uh, line. Lamantia again, the fullback, and we go with uh, two guys, a slot right. They're bunched up close to the offensive line, and it goes to Cyrus. And Cyrus is going to lose a couple of yards back outside the 15 to the 16-yard line. It'll be second down and 12 coming up. Well, oh, they're still booing. Second down and about 12, shotgun for Gerard Johnson. Steps up, throws a catch at the 10 and about the 8-yard line. And that's caught by Terrence McCoy. Terrence just caught another one, and that just ran him up six carries, and he's up, up uh, above uh, six receptions, rather than 60 yards tonight. And Terrence McCoy, six for 67. Third down play, throwing, catch, Fuller. That the five, Fuller is a touchdown! Cut back to his across the goal line, Jeff Fuller. By the same play that they ran to the other side to Terrence McCoy, they run it to Fuller. This time they get a different result. Fuller's able to spin back inside and dive into the end zone using that big body for the touchdown. And now the extra point. It's a 48-28 Texas A&M lead with 4.22 to go. And Bullock and again Brantley will hold. Bullock's done a nice job since coming in for uh, Bean. And that is up and good. 49 to 28, 422 left to play. Aggies lead. When it is back, here's another kickoff by Bullock. A good leg into this. A little bit short, though, at the 3 to the 5 to the uh, 15. Now to the 20. Oh, little seam. 30-yard line. Foot race. Bullock's chasing him at the 50, at the 40, and bounces him out of bounds across the Aggie 35 at the 33-yard line. 412 to go. 49-28. Texas A&M leading in the fourth quarter over Iowa State. Arnod steps up, throws, and it's a catch at the Aggie 15-yard line caught by Cedric Johnson at the 15 first down and 10 Iowa State Eric Williams just checked out of the lineup for Texas A&M's defense in the shotgun throw wide open at the 10 at the 5 and bounced him out of bounds across the 5 and out he goes at the Aggie 2 and that is Franklin one of the tight ends they've gone over 500 yards of total offense 74 plays 512 first and goal at the 2 Arnon rolling and the Aggies closing on him and they throw in a touchdown catch in the end zone wide open left side nobody close to Colin Franklin 330 to go and that makes it the Aggies 49 the Cyclones 34 and the extra point here by Mahoney. Spotted down. The kick is up, and it's good. Actually, that's Trent Hunter up there. There's Jeff Fuller. We're looking at everybody. There's uh, Ryan Tannehill. A little yeah. different setup this time. They're 5-5. Five and five. And here comes the kick. And they're kicking off. Kick it off. It's rolling, it's rolling, and now it's picked up at the 24, back to the 30, running to the sideline, and, oh, that's a late hit. No flag. No flag to this point that I can see anywhere. And here we go, first down and 10. And uh, Vila now has checked in at the uh, fullback position, and there goes Bradley Stevens. He's got good yardage. She bounced off a guy, and he's out near midfield. He's close for a first down. He got about eight. Just kept, looked like a pinball bouncing off those defenders. Second down and a couple. Terrence McCoy went in motion. He almost stepped across the line before that ball was snapped. Got a flag down, and that's a pitch here to Stevens going right side. Got the first down on the meaning of the flag. Likely a hold against AM. I think it's going to be a hold on Vila. Holding number 29 of the offense. Ten yard penalty. Second down. We got motion. It's from Terrence McCoy. Going right to left. Now he goes set. Long snap count. Running some time off that 40-second clock. There goes Stevens, breaking a tackle. <laughs> and he did the same thing this time he did last time. He got about eight yards as he goes to the 49-yard line. And there was at least 2,000. There may be more. Here's third down and a couple out of the eye. 
And it's play action by Gerard. He's going to throw, and it is incomplete at the 32-yard line. A little bit low and trying to scoop it up. Defended by uh, Allen Bell. ISU has not punted tonight, and this is only the second punt flag down. And they're telling everybody to get away from it. Big old high bounce. It's getting an Aggie roll. It's across the 20 and be killed at the 17-yard line. A flag back here at the line of scrimmage, and it's against Texas A&M illegal procedure. Anyway, I'll bring the average down a little bit. Number three in the nation coming in tonight on Brantley. And what a great career he's had here at Texas A&M. They're throwing on first down. That's a catch. And the Aggies are wrapping him up at the 28-yard line. Not enough for a first down. Time, a minute 57. Sumrall was the receiver. And defensively, that was Danny Gore. Arnod is going to run. He's to the 35. He's got a first down. And Aggies will fall on top of him with Matt Featherston making the tackle at the 37-yard line. Now you got a minute 39, stopping it for a moment. They're right back to the line of scrimmage. They roll the clock, and he throws it into the ground, does Arnott. Bring up second down. All right, a uh, second down and 10 with ISU at their 37-yard line. Plenty of time. Throws, catch across midfield, diving across the 45. Down at the 45 is Sumrall again. Defended by Danny Gore, but he really went down on his own. They're right back to the line. The Aggies running back here to get into position. Bennett and Obazor, the last two guys, to get on the defensive side. And again, Arnott takes it and slams it into the ground. He got a minute 29. R.C. Slocum, Dennis Franchoni, and Mike Sherman all tallied their first Big 12 road victories against Iowa State. Arnod throwing is hit as he is releasing the ball and a catch across the 20. Arnod never saw that because he was on his backside. And the catch by Sumrall across the 20 at the 18-yard line. First down. Iowa State marching here. It's 49 to 35. Roll the clock. Throws it into the ground again. Down to a minute 19. Here's their third. Of course, they'll go for it if they don't make it here. Arnod. Plenty of time throwing, and that's incomplete. About a yard deep in the end zone. At the end route, fourth down coming up. 109. Here's the fourth down throw. Steps up, throwing, and it is incomplete. Now and the Aggies will take over on downs and be able to run out the clock. And they're going to bunch up close, and Gerard will take a step back. And uh, now snaps it, takes the knee, and drops back here to the 16-yard uh, line. The 18 was the line of scrimmage. They're going to finish up with 580 yards of total offense. There's 25 seconds, four on the 40-second uh, clock. There's the knee. And Iowa State is not going to use the timeout. They're already walking across the field, and that will be it. So Texas A&M gets the win, 49 to 35. And again, a big 12 win for our head coach, Mike Sherman. Uh, I just told them, I said, yeah, you know, did a nice job, but the, the, the great thing about this is so much room for improvement. There's so many things you could have done better, uh, even though I think he threw for almost 80% uh, of, you know, completion percentage. There's a couple things uh, like that last pass we threw to stop the clock. We wanted him to boot out. Yeah, he came out throwing. He should have come out running because we wanted to boot out. And if he it wasn't clean, uh, just to, to take a, you know, to fall down and use clock time. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pleased with what his. I want him to always strive to be better, and he can be better than he was today. How big was the first run? Yeah. The first Big 12 win? Yeah, this was, uh, this was big. I mean, we didn't put a whole lot of – it was just the next game is what made it big. And we, uh, you know, as I told him uh, in the locker room, I said, you know, we're, you know, our back is so far against the wall, you know, we have splinters up our butt. So uh, we need to fight our way out of this thing. And uh, this was the first game. Now we got to get ready for the next one. But uh, – We'll enjoy this one until 4 o'clock tomorrow when we have to watch the tape and start uh, analyzing what we did wrong with the players and get, get right what needs to get right.